look at this, this is a good one. Some suggest that Parker's powers include the male spider's ability to hypnotize females. Stop, come on. <laughs> yes, my spider lord. <laughs> Can we just like stay up here all day? It is so crazy down there. That's right folks, Spider-Man is in fact Peter Parker. Listen, I did not kill Mysterio. The drones did. The drones that are yours. Does any part of you feel relieved about all this? What do you mean? Now that everybody knows, you don't really have to hide or lie to people. For the record, I never wanted to lie to you. But how do you tell someone that you're Spider-Man? Now everybody knows. But this isn't about me. This is hurting a lot of people. I've just been thinking about how to fix all of this. So, Peter, to what do I owe the pleasure? I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Please, we saved half the universe together. I think we're beyond you calling me, sir. OK, Steven. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. When Mysterio revealed my identity, my entire life got screwed up. I was wondering if maybe you could make it so that he never did. Strange. Don't cast that spell. It's too dangerous. Fine. I won't. The entire world is about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Wait, everyone? Can't some people still know? That's not how the spell works. So MJ's gonna forget about everything we've ever been through? Stop tampering with the spell. Oh my god, Ned. He's my best friend. Oh, my Aunt May should really know. Stop talking. happened we tampered with the stability of space-time the multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little the problem is you trying to live two different lives the longer you do it the more dangerous it becomes <laughs> what you wish for, Parker. Hello, Peter. Welcome back, everyone. It's pizza time. Sony and Marvel finally released the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, so of course there's a bunch of Easter eggs. We'll break it all down, confirming some of the multiverse elements from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. This will be my quick reaction video. I'll do a much longer, full breakdown with everything tomorrow as well. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll be doing a billion videos for all this. It is like Spider-Man season now between all the different Spider-Man movies we're getting in the next couple of months between Venom Let There Be Carnage, Spider-Man No Way Home, and then the Morbius movie in January. So the big thing here, obviously you see Dr. Octopus from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies come. He's got his arms from the Tobey films, just confirming that he is a version of that character from Spider-Man 2. Avril Molina basically said that his story in the movie picks up the minute that he goes into the bay at the end of Spider-Man 2. And a lot of that has to do with the way they're blending multiple timelines, multiple realities in the movie, and things go completely off the rails. And yes, you definitely heard Green Goblin's cackle from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, the Willem Dafoe Green Goblin, and saw one of his goblin bombs go off, confirming the rumors that he is going to be one of, if not the main villain of the movie, pulling together the multiverse version of the Sinister Six. Obviously, there's also the electrical blast for Jamie Foxx's Electro character. That's just a sign of him during the movie. When they're casting the spell, you see Peter in his suit down in the basement there, the Sanctum, and you see that inky black hand reach out and try to swipe Peter, growling, and he being blocked by Doctor Strange's magical barrier. I don't think that's meant to be Venom or the symbiote. I think it's just meant to be a phantom based on some of the Doctor Strange comics they'll explain during the film, like dark, terrible things from other dimensions. Some of their costumes look a little bit different, and I've already done a video about all of Spider-Man's new costumes, but the other big Easter egg that a lot of you longtime Spider-Man comic book readers will recognize is that they're basically doing the entire plot from Spider-Man One More Day. It was a very controversial storyline because a lot of people just absolutely hated it because it was basically Mephisto, yes, that Mephisto retconning Spider-Man's life with Mary Jane. 
During that version of events, Aunt May died because of the events of their version of Civil War. So Spider-Man goes to Doctor Strange and asks for a solution. Can you bring her back to life? Doctor Strange says, there's no way I can do this. So obviously Spider-Man going to him during this, like he sees the Halloween decorations with the little witch hat and is like, oh yeah, I know, wizard. I'll go to Doctor Strange. Here's the multiverse connection though. When Spider-Man in the comics eventually went to Mephisto, really it was Mephisto trying to manipulate him. Mephisto gives him a multiverse explainer. Like there are other timelines out there where you didn't become Spider-Man, where your loved ones that are dead in this reality are still alive. So we can mix and match those so that you get them back. And that's basically the soft explainer for what Doctor Strange is doing in Spider-Man No Way Home. It's kind of a, a Kang multiverse war type of explainer. You can see how they're kind of tying things to what happened during the Loki series. Remember when He Who Remains was tempting Loki and Sylvie, saying that he would give them everything they always wanted. I can give you the Infinity Gauntlet. I can make it so that you both live together and you've always had this happy life and nobody thinks it's weird that you're both two versions of the same person. That would have been he who remains using his own command over the multiverse to basically edit their timeline. So Doctor Strange is doing kind of the same thing here, but just using a magic spell to accomplish it. Trying to combine a couple different realities where Spider-Man's identity wasn't revealed because Mysterio never doxed him. But the comedy of the situation being that Spider-Man slowly realizes the consequences of what they're doing. That's not how the spell works, Peter. Because as he says, it will erase all memory of Spider-Man's identity from everyone. And that includes Aunt May, all of his friends like MJ, Ned Leeds. It'll also make all the Avengers characters forget about him as well. But in classic Spider-Man fashion, based on the plot here, Doctor Strange yelling at him, don't mess with the spell. It sounds like Spider-Man is directly responsible for the way they messed the spell up and it winds up shattering reality and combining things in a way that they didn't intend. This still doesn't absolutely confirm that the main villain of the film is going to be all the Sinister Six villains. There could be something else at play here, but at the same time, it seems like it's going to be a very Spider-Man versus the Sinister Six kind of movie, just because there are so many Sinister Six characters from different realities. And yes, because they are rolling so hard on these other realities, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, definitely 100% think that they are going to have cameos at some point during the movie. Maybe not huge cameos, maybe just small post credit scene moments, but I think the odds of them actually being in the movie just shot up 1000%. The whole idea here though is that this is supposed to lead into Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness and now it kind of seems like with the way things get really crazy with all these different realities getting blended in a bad way that sort of sets the stage for things going completely off the rails sort of leaning into the Kang multiverse war. Although I'm not expecting Kang to be a character in Spider-Man No Way Home or in Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness. Maybe they'll reference him at some point during one of those movies. But I don't think he's going to be a really big villain until we get to Ant-Man 3 Quantum Mania. It's just a lot of dialogue from Doctor Strange is basically giving us an explainer similar to what we got in the Loki series. A lot of what he's talking about sounds exactly what they were talking about on the Loki series. We know very little about the nature of the multiverse and how everything works. Everyone who's not named Kang... The other big thing you probably noticed in this is that we actually do get a look at him in the black suit. There are a couple different suits during the movie just based on some of the materials that we've seen. The black one, it just seems like they're calling the black and gold suit. But the web shooters he's got look very Doctor Strange inspired. And a lot of the materials that we've seen based on this suit seems like he uses magic when he's wearing this suit. Like it somehow integrates Doctor Strange's magic with aspects of the suit. We also finally get an explainer for what's going on in all those first look pictures that we got earlier with the snow covering the interior of the sanctum. And I love the way that Wong and Doctor Strange are walking around in the sanctum like it's no big deal. Like they're walking through giant snow drifts inside the middle of the living room here. And no spoilers for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings because Wong does show up in that movie before he shows up in this movie. So I'll talk more about what's going on with him during that movie once it gets released in theaters next week. But during this, obviously, they've got a costume change because of the weather here. Like, he's packed his bags and is taking a vacation. They also have the funny joke referencing the events of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Like, please, Peter, don't call me sir. We saved the universe together. I also love him pulling the same move on Spider-Man that the Ancient One pulled on him during the Doctor Strange movie. And then the Ancient One also pulled on the Hulk during Avengers Endgame. And I think part of the idea here, too putting some of the blame on Doctor Strange for what happens with them breaking the multiverse, so to speak, is the writer of Doctor Strange 2 said that around this period, Doctor Strange is sort of riding high. He's the most powerful that he's ever been. He's just defeated Thanos with the help of the Avengers. So it sounds like a very Iron Man, Tony Stark kind of problem. Like you also help create a lot of the problems that you wind up solving. It's the same idea with Avengers Age of Ultron and the creation of Ultron. Tony Stark thinking that he could protect the world by covering it in a suit of armor and that leading to the creation of Ultron. Doctor Strange thinking that he's powerful enough 
to help erase Peter from people's minds or erase knowledge that he's Spider-Man from people's minds and it just going wildly off the rails because as Wong says, he shouldn't even attempt that spell. But I do love the way that they're trying to tie all this stuff together. Like now it's starting to make sense how everything is coming together. But if it wasn't clear how the Sinister Six villains wind up in this reality, in the main MCU reality, it's because of the way they combine alternate timelines, alternate realities. And now the title, Spider-Man No Way Home, makes a little more sense. Like the home in the title, No Way Home, for Peter is a reference to the home that he knew before they changed everything, where everybody knew who he was. Like he had this relationship with MJ in one more day, comic book explainer, what they do completely erases that. So at least part of the movie is going to be him having to go back and try to explain to all of them who he is. And I think part of the idea with the Sinister Six villains, for them the title means no way home. If they were to go back to their home universes or find a way to go back, then they would also go back to being dead. Because, like, for instance, Dr. Octopus is supposed to have died at the end of Spider-Man 2. So them messing with the alternate timelines in the multiverse basically brings them back to life, so to speak. Same thing for Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin character. He died at the end of the first Spider-Man movie. I think what'll probably happen though when we get to the Tobey Maguire and the Andrew Garfield of it all, they'll try to hold that really close to the vest. But you can see if they're bringing these other villains from those universes to this main MCU universe. That's basically the explainer for how Tobey Maguire winds up in the movie and how Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man winds up in the movie. There have been so many rumors about what they're doing in the film. Like I said, I'm really just expecting small cameos, like really small moments from them. For a lot of you that are asking about the WandaVision Easter egg, so in WandaVision episode one, there's a date on the calendar that they circle with a heart that says August 23rd. So people are like, wait a minute, that's the day they're releasing the trailer. Did WandaVision predict the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer? The truth is, is that it just wound up being a coincidence. It's a really cool coincidence because they'd originally intended on releasing Spider-Man No Way Home during summer, during 4th of July weekend, like they always do. So we would have gotten the trailer long before August 23rd. So it wasn't so much that WandaVision was predicting the trailer release, but the bigger August 23rd connection that you could make, you could say is an even bigger coincidence, is about the two year anniversary of when Spider-Man left the MCU for a brief period. That's right, you might remember a couple years ago, it's been a hot minute, Sony and Marvel had a little falling out and for a very short period, they took Spider-Man out of the MCU, like no more Spider-Man movies. We are around the two year anniversary of that date, so I think that's one of the reasons why they chose to just hold the trailer till now. Also, it's CinemaCon and they're doing a big Sony presentation, so of course they wanted to show off footage for this. But like I said, my longer full breakdown video with Easter eggs for everything frame by frame will post tomorrow. Leave all your video requests and your big questions in the comments below. And let me know what is your favorite moment from this footage. I'll update the link at the end of the video here with that full breakdown video. You can click here for my Eternals trailer breakdown and how Eternals is setting up X-Men inside the MCU. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.